Welcome in to the Cleveland Browns Report by Chat Sports. I am your host, Matthew Peterson. Now, today's episode was filmed during our live show, which this week was Wednesday at 4 o'clock Eastern. But tune in next week, Thursday, 4 p.m. Eastern, as it is every single week. We're going to jump into the latest news and rumors on the Brownies. We're going to use our Bernie Kosar head. So in case you're a bit unfamiliar with it, here is our Bernie rumor meter head here. It's a bit of like a scale of believability, if you will. Zero Bernie heads on the story. It's fake news. Disregard it. Four Bernie heads. Believe one. It's a fact. Take it to the bank right there. So those are our Bernie heads for today. So the first story on today's episode. Are the Browns turning back time? Four Bernie heads, baby. We're going back in time because you might have seen it on Twitter already or somewhere on the internet, the World Wide Web. The Browns are going to roll out some throwback helmets, all right? Here it is. They tweet out themselves a picture of Grant Delpit sporting the white face mask. Now, I know this might not be the, the big uniform change you may have thought was coming. It's just a face mask change. But there's a bit of history behind this. The Browns wore white face masks, in case you don't know, for a long time, right? During the Bernie Kosar days and whatnot. In fact, did some deep, deep, deep digging on the story here for you all here. The Browns have not worn white face masks since 2005. After that season, they did some retro throwback gray face masks. And then they have been black face masks ever since 2015. So it's been a while since the Browns have worn white face masks. Now, next question is, like, do they just open a can of worms, right? Is the next phase, the next step here, maybe alternate helmets? Am I connecting dots? Am I at a breakfast restaurant playing at the kids' menu? Absolutely I am, but I don't care because there were some awesome helmets this year. I think the Bengals' helmet, the White Tiger, was just unbeatable. I like the Eagles. Was a fan of the Patriots throwback as well. Not all of them are on there. Uh, the Saints one is excluded. I thought the Saints helmet was chef's kiss. So would not mind at all. At least a little creativity coming from Maria of, you know what? Don't mind uh, if we do try and get some new, new, some new life and some new blood into the helmet category. Just don't put a helmet on a helmet. I wouldn't mind Brownie the Elf. Wouldn't mind the Dog Pound logo either. All right, I'll let you guys be the deciding factor here. Be the jury for me. Should the Browns keep the white face mask moving forward? Or do you I want to, I mean, one, you might have thought and no, it's gone. I had no idea they, they used to wear black, right? I never really paid that close attention to it. Let me know if this is something that keeps you up at night. Yes or no. All right, next story I want to get to here. Watson, is he the sole focus now? In my eyes, like they may not mathematically be eliminated yet, but I'm going to say the Browns are eliminated from the playoffs. Is Deshaun Watson the sole focus now moving forward? It's going to go back-to-back four Bernie heads, baby. Never been done before. But, yeah, I think right now the whole season, the rest of the four games are all about number four. All I want to see is Deshaun Watson look awesome. And if that comes at losses, so be it. You know what I mean? I, I don't need the Browns to go 4-0 and Watson go, uh, teetering. No. I'd rather Deshaun Watson throw for 500 yards and five touchdowns, but the Browns lose every game because the Browns have their franchise quarterback. Now, if you throw 500 yards, you're not losing. But you get the point I'm trying to make here, okay? Because the Browns out of the playoffs, essentially, all eyes are on Deshaun Watson, in my opinion. Now, priority number one is seeing Watson return to superstar status, in my opinion. I also would like to see the year end on a bit of a high note for Deshaun Watson so that we can go into the offseason thinking, you know what? We have got our superstar quarterback, right? We have checked that box. Everything is taken care of. We've got our man with Deshaun Watson. Now, we'll get to more on this story in just a moment, but today's Browns report is brought to you by Fetch the free app that allows you to scan your receipts and earn points that can be redeemed for gift cards to your favorite stores, restaurants, and online retailers. It's super easy to use. Use the app to snap a photo of your receipts from purchases from any store or click the e-receipt option and Fetch can connect to your Amazon account and you'll earn points for all shipped orders. Plus, Connect your email to earn points for every e-receipt and you'll receive you receive from Uber, Instacart, or any other purchase you make online. Those points can be redeemed for gift cards at your favorite stores and restaurants. Fetch is available on iPhone and Android. Use our link, chatsports.com slash fetch, 
and enter promo code CHAT at sign up for 5,000 points when you scan your first receipt. That's the equivalent of a free $5 gift card. It's a free app, and the 5,000 bonus points, well, they're only for a limited time. So get started now. Chatsports.com slash fetch. Enter promo code CHAT. The link is also in the comments and the description of today's show. All right, looking ahead here, the remaining schedule for Cleveland, as you talk about what the tension is moving forward, you got the Ravens, you got the Saints, then you close out the season going to Washington and going to Pittsburgh. You don't have a first-round draft pick to you know, sink or tank for. Uh, right now it belongs to Houston, and it's currently 12th overall. So sure, you don't want to give them a better pick, but like I don't really care too much about that. If you lose a couple more games, well, you're currently slated to pick 43rd overall in the second round. So you can look at that and go, hey, maybe go from 43 to like 39 or 43 to 40 or something like that. All I care about, though, is Deshaun Watson being it, being him, being the guy, which I don't have many concerns of. I just want to go into the offseason knowing, hey, the Browns may have some issues, but they have the biggest obstacle hurdled, which is they've got their superstar quarterback. The improvement we saw from week 13 to week 14 went to show, yep, that was just 700 days of rust in week 13. He played a so-so game in week 14 and still had some incredible plays that don't show up in the box score, but watching the game, you went, oh yeah, that's the NFL passing leader from 2020. So the biggest thing for me to watch for going forward for the rest of the season here is I want to see the growth and the connection between Kevin Stefanski and Deshaun Watson. Are these two going to show, hey, this is the head coach and quarterback duo for the next decade, right? You know what I mean? Because one of the two is a lot easier to replace, and it's not Deshaun Watson. So for Kevin Stefanski's sake, he has to show that he is the head coach, not just for this team, but for Watson. Because Haslam sunk about a quarter of a billion dollars into number four. He's sticking by him. So if the offense starts like kicking ass and taking names, but Kevin Stefanski keeps rearing his ugly head in front of Watson and keeps putting the offense in potholes, well, Andrew Barry might go, you know what? We are going to make a change, and it's not the quarterback. It's you, Kevin. We'll get to our final story and more in just a moment, but I quickly want to show some love to you guys, the viewers who make this channel possible. Here are some members are the Nodi gang. First ones in the video. First ones commenting more often than not. So AFX Apocalypse, appreciate you. Corey, Jonathan, D. Yates, Emmett, always, always in the comment section early on. If you want to be a part of the Nodi gang, click the bell icon. That way when a video drops, you'll get a notification. Hop in, like the video, be one of the first to comment like so many of you are. But let's grow the Nodi gang a bit more. What do you say? Third and final story today. The big one. Kevin Stefanski. Is he on the hot seat? I'm going to go two Bernie heads. I'm going to go two Bernie heads, which is right in the middle because I don't think you can say Kevin Stefanski has the head coaching job for 2023 no matter what. I, I don't think we're at that point. I think the way this team has stuttered on offense the last two weeks, and more than just the last two weeks, to be honest with you, I mean, we were... Led to believe, by me mostly, but still the point being, hey, when Watson comes back, this offense is going to flourish. Well, right now it's uh, like a rusty Ferrari that's been, you know, just completely water damaged. It is not anything you want to drive. So I did see these Vegas odds come out of the next head coach to be fired. And Stefanski's too. Vegas doesn't like to get things wrong. Vegas does not like to get things wrong. What does Vegas know? To have Stefanski at two ahead of Cliff Kingsbury. Someone that I definitely think is on the way out after this year. This might be one of those, uh, what does Vegas know that we don't know? Maybe there is something going on. Maybe there's something in brewing in Berea of, you know what? If Stefanski does not show that he is going to be a good coach for Watson the next four games, oh, they'll cut bait and they'll move on. I thought Stefanski was safe no matter what. This year, because he was a huge factor in getting Deshaun Watson to Cleveland. And I still do believe that. I still think that. But these next four games are huge. I'm not as confident as I once was. If I was at a 10 before, 
I'm at a 7.7, right? I've definitely reeled back a little bit to the point where I don't think Stefanski can show up 30 minutes late with Cheetos dust on his fingers and go, I've got the job next year. Who cares about the next month? Because the Brown schedule, like we had mentioned earlier, Ravens, Saints, Commanders, Steelers, like there's not some easy, you know, horrible teams. You already played the Texans, and you didn't score a touchdown on offense against them. You got the Ravens, who are never an easy out. We know this. The Saints, well, they're not good, but not the worst in football. The Commanders are looking like a playoff team. And the Steelers are the Steelers. And if that Week 18 game is the difference maker for Mike Tomlin going above or below 500, you better believe Pittsburgh's going to wrap up, you know. They're, first off, they're going to put Ben Roethlisberger in Kenny Pickett's jersey and just cart him out there in a wheelchair and be like, no, it's Pickett. See, no, no way Big Ben came back. But what is your confidence level in Stefanski coaching next year? I set him at a 7.7. Where are you? Scale for me 1 to 10. Let me know in the comments section below how confident you are that Kevin Stefanski is going to be the Cleveland Browns head coach in 2023. I also want to give a quick shout out to Monica R. Monica, appreciate your super thanks so much here on the channel. A $10 super thanks. Really appreciate that. All those donations, all those contributions help us get more studio time. So if you like the free content and you are feeling like you want to be an MVP, a super thanks, a super chat goes a long way. To wrap up the show, you all know this. It's a weekly staple. It's Petey's Doghouse. After the loss, there's no extra treats. There's no one off the leash. Here's how it looks. On the leash, the offensive line. The offensive line has just been cheeks the last couple of weeks. It really has. And I don't have a very good answer other than when Ethan Posick went down, it's not like Froholt has been a huge liability, but things have been different. That is for sure. Backyard only is Denzel Ward, right? This is, hey, I trust the dog, but I'm not going to take him outside and play with other dogs because Denzel Ward, T. Higgins, and Tyler Boyd were both out. We all knew where the ball was going to Jamar Chase. And despite that, him and Joe Woods could not take Jamar Chase out of the game. Chase is great, but when you know where the ball is going, you think you'd be a little bit more prepared. And then the doghouse is Kevin Stefanski. Your team was back against the wall. Had to win against the Bengals. The toughest game remaining. Win that game, and you got a decent path to the playoffs. Run the table, but not undoable. Instead, you gave up countless penalties, undisciplined football, and a horrible offensive game plan in a lot of ways. And yeah, fourth and one, Jacoby Brissett shot to the end zone from the 25. Probably not a good idea. 